Good morning. Welcome to the Sunday Celebration of Spirit here at the Golden Gate Center for Spiritual Living. I invite you to take this opportunity to turn off any and all electronic devices in your possession so they will not interrupt the sacred space that we're going to create today. And once you've done that, say hi to your neighbor. For those of you who know me, I'm sort of a sports nut. Uh, I follow professional sports. And Ted Williams, in his inaugural address when he was going into the Hall of Fame, said that America was all about a chance. Now, he was referring to the old Negro League players that never had a chance to play in the major leagues. But in the last couple of weeks, a very courageous young man from the University of Missouri came out as being a gay player in football. And it wasn't just any guy. This was a co-defensive player of the year in the Southeastern Conference, which if you believe their press, is the toughest conference in the United States uh, you know, to play college football. And my hope and prayer is that this young man does indeed just get a chance to play the game that he loves because after all our theme for this month is we're all made of the same stuff so with that we here at the Golden Gate Center for Spiritual Living honor you wherever you are on your spiritual path and the worst of this morning's chant will be up here on the wall, followed by Spiritual Mind Treatment by Reverend Carol Huntley. I am, I am the center of, I am the center of divine attraction. All things are pure and blessed, things are pure and blessed, things come to me now. I am, I am the center
the allness, the wholeness, the substance out of which everything comes, the source, the supply, the infinite love and intelligence which creates and sustains everything, all that that I call God is everything that I can imagine and so much more because infinite means there is no end in sight. And so as I bring that into the awareness that that is who I am, that I have no end in sight, it is true for each one here with me, each one who's watching online, each one who ever, 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 ever hears this prayer, may it be that they are reminded of the infinite presence that indwells them and all is well. For we are loved, we are guided, we are connected, we are inspired. And I know that for myself because I am guided and loved and protected and inspired. In this moment, day by day, every single, every breath that I turn to my source and ask for what is next, it is delivered to me. And so I bless everyone here this morning with the same awareness we are the beloved of the infinite presence. Right here, right now, having to do nothing, change nothing, nothing. We are the beloved and are so, so infinitely blessed in this moment. And my prayer is that each and every one here realizes that to a deeper extent than ever before, including me, this very morning. I give my thanks. I release this prayer and know it is done. And so it is. Amen. Well, good morning once again. I am very, very happy to be back. And um, I heard Bodhi and I heard um, Alyssa, Allison Page, sorry, Allison um, rehearsing this morning. And it was just so wonderful to be back together with uh, the beloveds here. And so I'd like to introduce our guest artist today, Allison Page, who is a San Francisco Bay Area native. She is uh, a singer and songwriter and sings all over the place at churches all over Northern California. And she is on um, the backup team, the backup singing team for people like Karen Drucker and Melissa Felipe. So, and she's just darn gorgeous in her own right. So please welcome Allison Page. <laughs> Through you as it sings its song 
to you sings back with joyful reverie. potentiality is always such a blessing. Thank you, Allison and Bodie. My name is Janet Carol Ryan, and it's my privilege to be your practitioner of the morning amongst a core of practitioners that, you know, each and every one of you has already been prayed for today, and the chair that you're sitting in and the space that we occupy is prayed up. And we are, I think our service is one continuous prayer, so we just continue with that as we bless the children. Hey, hi Carmen, good morning. We're so glad that you're here. And let us all, as we bless Carmen and the children of our community, also remember the children that we know and imagine what if we all had this kind of training to know truly who we are from the very beginning? And let's imagine that this stage is filled with children who um, grace our community with their light and love. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you, teachers. Mm. So we have many wonderful things going on in this community, as always. This morning in our opening prayer, the circle of prayer in this space, uh, the word that I chose for myself is flow, and I was reflecting on that, that our community is a continuous flow of such awesome creativity, classes, opportunities to grow and share and expand. And we have one of those today with our beloved Reverend Sarah facilitating helping each other succeed. So if there is something that you are nurturing in your life or your business and you'd like some support for that or you'd like to support others in their expression or a bit of both because that's what it'll be, right? Everyone helping each other succeed. Just hang out here. There'll be pizza, I understand, for um, snacking, and uh, Reverend Sarah will facilitate a way for us to support each other in our work and our passion. 
the self-mastery class, which is being facilitated by Marilyn Letzos, um, is, has started, and there is still an opportunity to enroll. It starts tomorrow night. Okay, okay, all right. So you can get in on the very first class. It's open for enrollment, and it's imperative that if you want to take <coughs> class, see Marilyn today at the education table and sign up today right away, immediately. Like, just the first thing you do before you get your coffee after service. Okay. Um, let us see. Next week, the mystic and poet Robert McDowell will be speaking and also offering a workshop. Um, he is a, an author of many, many books. And just to entice you, I want to mention the title of a couple of the books, Poetry as Spiritual Practice and The More We Get Together, The Sexual and Spiritual Language of Love. Did your ears perk up a little <laughs> bit at that? He's going to be doing a workshop on a new paradigm for men and women. And it'll be an interactive journaling opportunity to explore new possibilities in relationship. Sounds good, eh? There's a new position open in the office of the Golden Gate Center for Spiritual Living, the hub of our administrative position. Uh, there will be, uh, there's a, sorry, there's a, announcement about it on the events, events table, table, which is over there. Okay. You know what? I don't know why. I'm feeling a little nervous. I'm going to take a breath. Would you all take a breath with me? Breath of the heart. I think it's because I, I know that we have a time limit for the number of, uh, for the announcements, and there are many to share with you. And I also am aware that I made an error, that I forgot our gratitude. And our gratitude this morning is for all who participated in the last two Sundays while Carol was away, and particularly those that stepped up last week when there was an unexpected change in the speaker. And... Uh, so I'm expressing a bit of vulnerability that I forgot something important. I want to share that with you. Mm. You're welcome. We have an opportunity to celebrate our Pisceans this coming Friday. Um, many of the, in, uh, all the information about all of these opportunities to share and celebrate are in our bulletin. So I invite you to um, take a look. And let me see. I think I've covered everything that I was intending to share with you, except for one very important thing, and that is to welcome any of you who may be here for the first time. Know that we see your light. We welcome you warmly, that whether a newcomer or a longtime member, all are welcome here, and we're so grateful for your presence. And now I'd like to welcome Reverend Carol Thank to you. share some things with us as well. Um, yeah, I just want to piggyback on um, the announcement about Robert McDowell. Um, it, it, this is a new person with our community, and I want to say that uh, I, I don't remember how his information came to me, but I talked to him a few times on the phone, and he, he fascinated me so much that I, I planned a Sunday for him to be here when I'm here because I want to have what he has. And so um, there's a flyer over there on the events table that is sort of what he wrote up about what he does, but he seems to be so fascinating that I don't want to miss him. And when I was at convention, I sat with a minister in uh, um, Covina, California, who has had him repeatedly. And she says, you will fall in love with him. So I, I, I don't have any specifics to say, except I think you ought to be here uh, for him. So that's next Sunday. I'll be here, and he'll be here. And then I also wanted to say that uh, the following Friday, the first Friday in March, um, I will be doing a workshop on uh, spring ritual. 
And this, these uh, monthly workshops about ritual are designed to ha give you a wonderful experience, but also to teach you about ritual so that you can take these and apply them to your family or to other groups that you're a part of. So the sign up for that is over here on the education table. So those are my announcements. And now I want to get into the talk portion of today because I have so much to share with you. This uh, convention that uh, I, w this is the program. It looks like a cool magazine, doesn't it? This is Jean Houston, our keynote speaker. I have this here for you uh, that you can take a look at. It was uh, really amazing. And so my talk today is part report, part summation, and part an invitation for you to recommit to your own life. Like, you know, as a minister, I don't sit and get fed that often like going to church because you're there to receive and I'm up here. But at convention, I get to receive all day for like five days. And so uh, I'm overflowing. So it's, I was happy, happy, happy to be there. Uh, so uh, just part of the report part, I'd like Bob Gordon to stand up. Uh, so Bob Gordon was a delegate, as um, some who were, weren't able to go are, are, were voting delegates here, but I want to talk about Bob because Bob is a part of the legal team for the whole Centers for Spiritual Living. There are about three um, lawyers that do the legal stuff for our overall church, our, the whole organization, and I can't tell you how many times the big wigs of our movement came up to me and said how much they appreciate Bob. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he is quintessentially useful to our whole community. So that's fabulous, and thank you very much. I'm so proud that he's ours. Um, also, Barbara Leger was there, and uh, Reverend Barbara Leger uh, received the Meritorious Minister's Award for um, spreading science of mind in the world. Now, Barbara Leger, for those of you that don't know, is the minister of our sister center in Ukraine. And there was a great deal of prayer that was being done for Ukraine throughout the week. And because the, the road that goes from Kiev to her town is closed uh, because of the violence, she is staying here in this country. She was going to go right on over to Ukraine to be with her center, but she's going to lead it from this country for a little while longer. And uh, so that was wonderful. And then for me, I was reelected to uh, the position of secretary for the minister's council for all of the ministers of our movement. And so I'm very happy. Very, very uh, happy to be able to serve in that way. So uh, Dr. Ken Gordon, th this is him right here. Dr. Ken Gordon is the community spiritual leader of all of us, and he is from uh, Kelowna, BC. He started the whole conference by reiterating our mission and vision, which I don't say very much, the mission and vision of the whole organization. So this is what you guys are all about. I hope you like it. Um, the, vision, the vision is creating a world that works for everyone. That's, that's what we want, creating a world that works for everyone, basically because of the theme this month. We are all made of the same stuff, just as Rick said. So the way that we accomplish that vision through our mission is awakening humanity to its spiritual magnificence. So that's what you are about, being here. You are about making a world that works for everyone and awakening humanity to its spiritual magnificence. And so that's essentially what I try to do with us every Sunday, every class, all the time. And the way we're doing it this particular year is to look very carefully at our philosophy as envisioned by our founder through the essay, What We Believe. And uh, that's what we're doing in home studies and every single Sunday, um, and uh, just getting all the juiciness out of it that we possibly can. So finishing up February is this statement. We believe in the incarnation of the spirit in everyone, and that all people are incarnations of the one spirit. That's 
We are one with God. That's, uh, that is what that statement says. And if we all really lived this statement, every moment of every day, we would be forwarding the vision and the mission of our organization, and we would be pretty darn happy as well. So because you are here, whether you know it or not, I know you think you're here for you, and you are, but you're also here for the world. And you are here for reimagining what humanity can be in the world. And so my topic today is your life is a promise, because you are a promise to the world for reimagining us in this way, that we all work together, that we have a world that works for everyone, and we are all awakened humanity to our spiritual magnificence. So the title today is Your Life is a Promise, and the word today is promise. So the altar that was done by Lori today is such a sweet um, depiction of this promise because all of these things, whether you are a daffodil or an anemone or a, a snapdragon, if you're an artist or if you're a sheriff or a gardener or a ball player or an author or a cook or a fireman, you are a promise. And you know, every single one of these pieces of our world has their own ministry. Isn't that a sweet thing to think about, that, that the ranunculus have their own ministry? And they're about beauty in the world. And so whatever you are uh, in your role, um, you are a promise that is hopefully being fulfilled in the world. And as you do your service in the world, if you also ancillarily, <laughs> uh, you know, side by side, um, awaken humanity to its spiritual magnificence, then fabulous. So um, we are here for a purpose, and part of it is the revelation of this philosophy. And I say that not as a proselytizing, but because our philosophy is so darn simple. You know? There's one life. That life is God's life. That life is my life now. That's it. <laughs> that, that is it. So Jean Houston said in her talk, and this is, she, that was so great for her to say, that we are the most inclusive and genuinely welcoming philosophy in the world. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? And I believe it. I believe it. Because, you know, believing that, there's one life, that life is God's life, that life is my life now, you, we can be Buddhist or Methodist or Catholic or whatever, we, or a religious scientist, and still further that very welcoming and inclusive philosophy. So um, it, as we live that purpose and that promise, each in our own way, uh, we manifest um, what we came to the world to express. And uh, one other of Jean's uh, quotes that I love, she didn't say it this time, but she says it so much that it's in me, we're the ones we've been waiting for. So uh, I, I believe that's true. So. Um, as I see all spiritual teaching as uh, coming down in two categories, oneness and mastery, that's why I wrote this book, uh, that's what I saw in this meeting this week, is so many things about oneness and so many things about mastery. So that's what the rest of the talk is about. So first of all, about oneness. Um, one of the things that is so, so, so exciting to me is that our movement has said that we want to touch 100 million lives. And that's, um, that's a lot. That's a, a lot of people to say and show um, that we are a, awakened humanity. And, and so uh, one of the ways that the leadership is doing this, which I think is brilliant, is that we are partnering with other spiritual philosophies and other ministries that sort of teach the same thing, that sort of teach a positive, life-affirming, co-creative philosophy, and so we are finding pieces in Christianity, in Catholicism, in Judaism, that's it so far, I mean, Buddhists, of course, we partner with them, but we are, and we just bless, bless where those sirens are going, knowing that God is right there. 
So, um, we are partnering in a formal way. We are creating covenants and we are signing them. We signed a covenant um, this meeting with uh, a group called the Fellowship of Affirming Ministries. And this is uh, a, a ministries that are founded by this woman, Bishop Flunder, and she's actually over in um, Oakland. So there was a ceremony where we signed that we are for the same things and awakened humanity. She signed it, and Ken Gordon signed it. So um, this wonderful speaker, Bishop Yvette Flunder, um, shared an analogy about spiritual growth that I think is so fabulous, and it's about archery. And she said she talked. Uh, she said told this funny story about when she first went to do uh, archery. You know that the arrow just went pew, just. Pew. But um, what she realized is that the pull back is essential to the forward motion of the arrow, which stands to reason. I mean, I've never done archery. I don't even know if I'm doing the right hands. But anyway, um, what she said was that you pull back on the bow so the arrow can go forward. And we in our lives have to go backward in order to go forward. And her quote is, to go forward, we got to claim all our stuff. So let's think about that for a little bit. And what is our stuff? In this philosophy, the place that we can get kind of um, off in the wrong direction is when we say, I'm perfect, whole, and complete, and then everything that comes forward that doesn't feel perfect, whole, and complete, we bury. And if we bury that without bringing all our stuff from the back so we can go forward all together, then it comes out sideways. So uh, all of our unskilled parts, all of the pain that we have had or the pain that we have caused, all the judgment that we have, all the unforgiveness, what she wanted us to do is bring all of that in, forward into consciousness and let the grace of God heal that so that we could be whole people with some unskilled parts yet moving forward so that we can be more useful in the world and more compassionate than just a spouting we're perfect, whole, and complete. So um, we're more powerful when we bring our shadow self forward. So let me show you how that might work. Um, let's say that you grew up in a family where there were unkind and cutting remarks and that you basically had to get in there first or you would be massacred by the unkind and cutting remarks if, it, if, the, if the family tipped towards that, you know, like um, it, at any particular time over whatever issue. And, and so the belief under that is actually pretty horrible. The belief under that is I have to destroy them before they destroy me. So if you go into a spiritual philosophy with that growing in you, that's not very pleasant. And so we push that down. And what happens is that if we don't deal with that consciousness, it comes out sideways. And every once in a while, well, we will let go with a zinger, and nobody knows where that came from, least of all us. And we're ashamed, we're horrified, we're uh, sorry, because we didn't bring all our stuff forward. And what we do in healing that stuff is to tame our defensive response. If, if you have any defensive response, in other words, if you have a button that can be pushed, I really encourage you to just take any class because that sort of thing is dealt with in every single class. And so um, this was a, a quote by another wonderful speaker that I love that fits right in here, and it says, we become enlightened not by thinking of the light, but by making the darkness conscious. So that's how we bring all of us forward. So um, this, there's another powerful spiritual skill that I'm going to tell you about right now that was from this guy, Austin Vickers, who has this wonderful movie that I ordered. It's, it's, it's so much better than The Secret. It really is. It's a wonderful story with a lot of lesson in it, and it's so inspirational, and 
uh, you know, everybody was crying at the end, which of course for me is a mark of fabulousness. Um, and so um, w we saw this movie, and then we talked about it, and he shared some more about his, uh, his life. And the lesson involves getting out of the content and into the process. Now, when we're in the content, we're in the conditions. And that's another thing that in class, all the teachers try to get you out of looking at the condition and doing a prayer to change the condition. It's like trying to move around the furniture in your house, but you still have the same furniture. It's that you go to the source, which is the belief underneath. But um, his, his idea about uh, getting out of the content and going into the process um, was, uh, I'll give you the example that was so fabulous. So you know how it's said that if, you, if you're annoyed with something in someone else, you have it in yourself. It's uh, one of those spiritual things that I don't like it. <laughs> and, he, and Austin Vickers didn't like. And, and so with his, um, th this is a, a man who was a, a trial attorney. Uh, and then he became a spiritual teacher, which is an uh, interesting path. And, and, uh, and he, so he brings all of um, his very assertiveness, assertive behavior uh, into his teaching. So, and the movie is about a trial. So it, it all fits together. But anyway, so in the explaining this, getting out of the content and going to the process, he said, you know, with that idea that we uh, don't like what's in ourselves, I couldn't accept that. And, uh, I, and so my teacher said, well, give me an example. So he said, well, I really, really hate child abuse. I, I, I hate child abusers. And I have looked everywhere in me, and I am not a child abuser. And so, his teacher said, and this was about the worst, this was about sexual child abuse, and uh, he said, so do you think that child abuse is about power or is it about sexuality? And so he said, he'd, he said he'd not done enough research to know that it's about power. It's about power over someone who's much weaker than you. So then his teacher asked only one more question. He said, have you ever been in a position of power and abused it even a little to take advantage of someone? He's a lawyer. <laughs> he said, oh my God, I do it every day. Because he, being a trial lawyer, if there was a way to, to shift the advantage to his client, he would do it. So that's the example of getting out of the content, which is child abuse, and into the process, which is the practice of unfair use of power. And I just think that is a brilliant model to, to put into spiritual practice. So we bring our parts, all of our parts that we heal, into oneness so we can experience oneness within ourselves, harmonious oneness within ourselves, so that then when we meet another one that has done this much spiritual work, well, and we learn to do it with people who are completely unconscious as well. Just knowing our oneness with them through our humanity. And whoever gets awakened first gets to share it with each other. So the takeaway from today, and for those of you who are here for the first time this year, what we're doing is I'm giving, and it's in your bulletin too, it's something you can say to people that, has, that really doesn't have anything to do with... Uh, Religion, usually, it just makes sense. And when they say, well, what do you get out of that place you go to on Sunday? You can say, well, this is what I got this Sunday. And this is your takeaway. 
I have something great to do in my life, otherwise I wouldn't even be here. And that something great can be, you know, you're a great ball player and you have a ministry in your ball playing, or, any, or whatever it is that you do. Whatever it is that you do, you can be the beacon of light for others around you. So that's the takeaway from this Sunday, and I'm moving now from uh, oneness to mastery. Mastery in life is being able to co-create a life with God that you love. So most of our teaching is about consciousness, as you probably know. Consciousness is the beliefs, the attitudes, the longings, the fears that we have in our mind, and it is the construction of our pathway in our belief system, construction of that pathway to fulfillment. So this is a story that I heard about the power of consciousness, the power of mental movement. So there was a, um, an experiment with a robot. And the ro th this was a little thing that looked kind of like a coffee can. And it moved in little straight lines. So it jerked around this place where it was. And, and there was a way to track it so that you had a printout that had all of these jerky lines that went all over the place when the robot was turned on. So then what they did is that they put some baby chicks in with the robot. So the baby chicks were hatched and they were put in the robot with the robot. So they thought the robot was the mom. So the robot moved around the little chicks went around um, with the robot. Then what they did is that they put a clear partition with the chicks on one side and the robot on the other side. And the chicks were all pressed up against the partition, longing to get to mom. And the movement of the robot changed to all around the chickens. Chick consciousness. <laughs> Chick consciousness changed the behavior of the robot. Now, do you think that we have as much power in our consciousness as the chicks? Yes, the answer is yes, we do. So much of our work, much of our work is in clarifying consciousness and elevating consciousness so that we expect the best, so we look for the best, so the, all of the qualities that we name in our prayers, we look for in the world and celebrate it when we find them. And when we find something that isn't so fabulous, we, you know, we tend to not place that much importance upon us. But actually, I'm so proud of our movement because we...